I'm gonna be telling you some secrets about every race in Blast Fruits and some pretty cool tricks that you definitely did not know. Okay, so first up, we got the human race, and the human race is one out of the four races in the game that players can spawn in as, but you're mostly gonna spawn in as this race because it has a 50% chance of happening. The human race is one of the most popular races, and when people join the game, they don't even notice that they're a human because you literally have no physical features. And the way you can get the human race if you don't have it is by buying a race reroll from the trot NPC for 3,000 fragments, but you can only do that once you get into the second C. You can also buy a race reroll from the shop for 90 Robux. I don't recommend this one personally or you can buy it from special events but let's talk a bit more about the race itself so the basic human race version one actually gives you no buffs so you get no advantages by spawning in as this race but there is a way to upgrade it obviously just like every race in the game so the way you upgrade the human race to v2 is by completing the alchemist quest to take this quest you would have to have completed the coliseum quest before it and once you unlock the v2 version of the human race you actually get four different buffs you get an increase in movement speed your flash step rate gets doubled and the cooldown is lowered it goes from around 15 seconds to 10 seconds which is really good and you also get an extra dodge and faster dodge regeneration time on your observation hockey and you also have a slightly longer dash distance but there are no visual changes like i mentioned before moving on to the version 3 of this race and for this one you got to complete aries quest and to get the v3 it's actually slightly different from all the other races to complete this quest you have to kill the diamond boss the jeremy boss and fajita and make sure you grab the quest every time you join the game because it'll reset if you don't but the buffs you get from the v3 is an ability called last resort and while you activate the last resort ability the user deals more damage depending on how low their health is during the ability which means if you're on lower health you deal way more damage to your opponents which in my opinion is really overpowered but it does have a 20 second cooldown and it lasts for five seconds moving on to the v4 of the human race to get the v4 it's similar to all the other v4s you have to complete the temple of time puzzle and then you have to do the trial of strength and then a bunch of other boring stuff stuff and finally once you unlock it you just get a butt ton of abilities because it's the race v4 when you transform into race v4 you receive max stats as well as increased damage speed and heal by 10 percent you get an ability called psycho which gives your flash step three charges which temporarily makes you invisible and faster when you use it and the charges can be seen at the bottom of your screen when you transform and the flash steps also regenerate faster your dash distance increases and your moves don't get cancelled when you take damage which is really useful when you're fighting people the next ability you get is called limit break you basically get a rage meter and it allows you to get much stronger using it and in the upgraded version your rage meter actually lasts longer and it's uncapped to 150 percent and this is where you get the first visual change for the human race and it looks amazing you literally turn into a zombie looking creature with a bunch of red aura around you and it looks really dope one of the coolest looking races in the game in my opinion all right, moving on, the next race we got here is the shark race, and this is also one of the four races in the game that you can spawn in as. But for this one, you only have a 12.5% chance, so not a lot of people will be getting this. And the way you can get this race otherwise is the same as the human race. You can reroll from Trot for 3,000 fragments or reroll the race in the shop. And this is the same for most of the other races in the game. So unlike the human race, you'll actually instantly know if you are a shark. In the version one, you actually have a fin on your back. I guess that's what symbolizes you're a shark. And the V1 actually gives you some buffs you take less damage in water and it increases your swim speed because i guess you're a shark but moving on to the v2 to get the v2 it's the same as every other v2 in the game you got to complete the alchemist quest and you also need the coliseum quest to do it and the buffs you get for the v2 is it increases your player speed while moving in the water and completely removing any damage taken from the water even if you have a blocks fruit equipped in. so you can literally just be swimming around in the sea with the leopard fruit pretty crazy but it doesn't have any visual changes moving on to the v3 for this one you got to complete the arrowies quest and this varies depending on your race and for the shark v3 you gotta defeat a naturally spawned in sea beast not the sea beast player spawn in you just gotta drive out in the sea with a boat and hope one spawns in and for the v3 you actually get an ability called water body and when this ability is activated the damage you take from players and npcs is reduced by 80 percent so you basically take almost no damage this ability lasts for 6.5 seconds and has a cooldown of 30 seconds and you actually also got some visual changes for this one along with the fin that's already on your back you get two other fins on both your arms making you look really cool if your avatar fits it next up is the v4 for the shark race and for this
this one, it's the same as every other V4. You gotta complete the Temple of Time and do the Trial of Water, along with a bunch of other stuff. And this is a buff that every race gets in their V4. When you transform, you receive max stats as well as increased damage speed and you heal by 10%. But with the Shark Race, you get an ability called Leviathan's Armor. For this one, you gain a Water Shield, which regenerates by dealing damage, and that is really epic, especially if you dish out a high amount of damage. In the upgraded version, your shield's capacity is increased. Next up, we got the Whirlpool, and for this one, you apply a water debuff to your enemies, slowing their speed, and the effect stacks, so you can use it on them multiple times. In the upgraded version, the effect lasts longer. And for the visual changes, this one's actually really cool as well. Your tail gets bigger, and when you transform, you create a huge blue aura around you, and you look really badass. This is also one of my favorite transformations. Overall, the Shark Race is a really solid race, but not as good as some of the other ones on this list. Moving on, the next race on this list is the Angel Race, and this is also one of the four races races players can spawn in as and for this one you also got a 12.5% chance same as the shark race and if you want to get in other ways it's the same as the other races for the v1 of this race you actually have two small wings on your back and your players jump height will slightly increase and you'll also be able to use the air jump ability even if you haven't bought it and the small wings also look pretty cool for getting the v2 it's the same as the other races you got to get the alchemist quest done and there are no visual changes for the v2 but you do get some extra small abilities and the first ability is that your first air jump will actually go slightly higher than the other jumps and the energy you consume while air jumping is reduced by 20% and this is really helpful especially if you're a new player and you also gain an additional air jump pretty fitting for the angel race moving on to the next one the v3 for this one you also got to do Aries quest and for this quest it's actually pretty special for the angel race you have to kill another player with the angel race but if you got a friend that has the race you can ask them if you can kill them and then you can get this quest done really quickly so for the v3 the buffs are actually pretty cool first up the physical changes that the wings are are bigger and they flap around a bit and the user unlocks an ability called heavenly blood and when activated it increases defense by 15% and it heals around 20% of the player's maximum health as well as around 10% of their maximum energy along with their natural regeneration so this ability actually stacks and it lasts for 6.5 seconds and has a cooldown of 20 seconds overall I'm not sure what I think about this ability I do think it's on the weaker side compared to the other v3 abilities but let me know down in the comments moving on to the v4 you got to complete the temple of time puzzle and do the trial of the king and once you do that you get the ancient powers just like every other v4 you get an ability called prince of the skies and this ability allows the user to glide in the air by holding the dash button and free flight by holding the jump button and this ability is really cool in the upgraded version all the effects are increased greatly next ability is called king's rule and for this one it adds an aura around the user with multiple effects slowness damage energy drain and screen distortion so if anyone walks next to you they're going to take a bunch of damage and in the upgraded version, the effects are increased. And the visual transformation for this race is honestly one of my favorites because you literally spawn in four wings and you have this amazing yellow glow around you and it looks really cool. Next up, we got the Rabbit Race, and this is also one of the four races you can get by joining the game, with the same chances as the Shark and Angel, a 12.5 chance. And if you don't have it, the way you can get it is the same as the other races. So, we actually got a physical change for this race as well. In the V1, you get two pretty cool bunny ears on your head, and also increases the movement speed by 1.5, which is pretty good for new players. And for the V2, it's the same as the other ones, you gotta complete the Alchemist quest, and you get no visual changes for the V2, but your speed and dashing is increased. Increases the player movement speed to double their normal speed and this is really good especially because it stacks with other abilities and stuff it also increases the player's dash length slightly and it also decreases the energy cost for dashing and that's going to be really useful moving on to the v3 for this one it's the same quest giver as the other races but for this one you got to collect 30 chests but this one is one of the easiest race quests because you don't actually need to go around killing things you just got to server hop a bunch of chests and you actually get a visual change for this as well you get a nice rabbit tail and you unlock an ability called agility and when you activate this your player's movement speed goes to four times your normal speed making you like the flash it also increases your dash length slightly and decreases the cooldown for dashing it lasts for 6.5 seconds and has a cooldown of 30 seconds you can use this to either run away or run through fights a really useful ability and for the v4 you gotta complete the temple of time puzzle by doing the trial of speed pretty fitting name if you ask me and when you go into the v4 you unlock the ancient powers like the other races and you unlock an ability called whirlwind for this one you leave a tornado while 
dashing. So if you just spam your dashing, you just spawn in a bunch of tornadoes. And the, what the tornadoes do is that they trap enemies temporarily. And they actually don't do damage. In the upgraded version, the tornadoes become way stronger. Next ability is called Lightning Cloak. And for this one, your dashes become much longer due to the electricity from the dash. And also has really cool effects. And in the upgraded version, it allows you to super dash by holding down the dash button. And the super dash looks really sick. And for the transformation, this one is also really cool. You have a huge green aura that spawns in around you. Your tail gets way bigger and your hair starts glowing with electricity. I mean, you're literally like the Flash at this point. Okay, so next up we got the cyborg race and this race is not actually a race you can spawn in as you get this race by doing the cyborg puzzle if you want the specifics on the quest for the cyborg you can search it up in the wiki it was added in update 14 and once you completed the cyborg quest you got the version 1 of the ability it gave you absolutely no buffs like the human race but you did get a metallic mask on the upper left part of your head and it looks pretty cool moving on to get the v2 for this is just like the other races you gotta go talk to the alchemist and once you get v2 you get a 10% defense against melee sword and gun attacks and 15 percent of the damage you receive literally converts into energy and that's really sick and fitting of a cyborg next up for v3 you got to do the Ares quest and for the cyborg what you have to do is give him a physical blocks fruit and this one is probably the easiest because i know all of you watching got some useless fruits in your inventory and once you do the v3 you get an ability called energy core and this one has a bunch of buffs so it boosts the player's defense by 30% and it also creates an area of damage lightning effect around the player that does take damage to enemies within their range. And the damage you do from this ability is actually based on the player's level. The damage starts at 0 and scales up by 0.65% every 10 levels. So someone that's level 2000 will deal around 130 damage per tick. But if you're level 1750 then you'll deal 113.75 damage per tick. I don't want to go into the specifics because it's pretty complicated. Okay, just know it's a pretty cool ability that lasts for 6.5 seconds and has a 30 second cooldown. Moving on to the race v4 for the cyborg. The way you get it is by doing the temple of time puzzle and doing the trial of the machine. And trust me, you turn into a machine after this quest. So we got the ancient powers that every race gets, then we got energy control. And for this one, any damage that's dealt now chains nearby enemies through orbs and it allows you to super jump. But you gotta have observation hockey enabled. And for the upgraded version, the effects of the chain damage increases and the super jump deals damage and doesn't require observation to be enabled. Next ability is called aftershock and for this one you apply an electrifying effect that disables your opponent's observation ability so they literally won't be able to dodge your shots. And in the upgraded version the electrifying effect becomes stronger. And the visual changes for this are one of my favorites. You actually get a bunch of metallic looking wings behind you and when you fully transform you get this amazing pink glow around you and it looks really badass. Next up we got the ghoul race and this is also a race that cannot be obtained by spawning in. And the way you get it is that you need to be at least level 1000 and you need a 100 ectoplasm which is dropped by NPCs that spawn at the cursed ship. And you also need a hellfire torch which has a 1 to 2% chance of being spawned in by the cursed captain who spawns in every night with a 1 out of 3 chance so it's gonna be really difficult to get this race. Then you gotta go talk to the extremic NPC and he gives you the race. The V1 for this race is actually pretty cool, you get a slightly increased regeneration and you run 30% faster during the night. Pretty ghoul like. And for a visual change, you get a pair of two black horns on your head. To get the V2, it's the same as the other races. You gotta go talk to the alchemist. And once you do that, your life leech gets enabled. You get no visual changes, but every time you hit a player using a fighting style, you heal by 25%, making it really good for Buddha users. But the first life leech ability is for the players. You actually get a second one for NPCs, but this time you only heal by 5%, which is still really decent for Buddha users because you practically take no damage when you're grinding with that fruit. And for the V3, you gotta do Ares quest, and for Ghoul, you have to kill 5 players. And it needs to be completed in a public server, but you can just get your friend to join your game and let you kill him. Pretty easy quest if you think of it like that. And for the version 3, you actually get a physical change where your horns just look way cooler. They get much bigger and pop out of your head a bit more. And you unlock an ability called heightened senses. When it's activated, you can use skills that are still on a 40% cooldown, and that is really overpowered. You can basically spam all your abilities. It buffs the player's overall damage by 10%, speed by 10%, and defense by 15%. And this one lasts for 8 seconds and has a cooldown of 25 seconds, making it the fastest usable V3 ability out of every race. Moving on to the V4, you gotta do the Temple of Time puzzle and do the Trial of Carnage. Pretty fitting to the name. You get the ancient powers like every other V4 and you get an ability called Blood Siphon. And for this one, every attack you send out gains Life Leech. 
which means you heal a bunch of health every time you do damage. And in the upgraded version, the effects of it is increased greatly. Next ability is called Domain Expansion. Hmm, I wonder where they got this from. It adds a huge dark field around the user that removes people's health, regeneration, and applies blindness on your enemies. And all your nighttime passive abilities become available during the day. Really overpowered. In the upgraded version, when you dash, a bunch of crows will start attacking your enemies. Pretty random if you ask me. And it also increases your field of range. And for the transformation itself, it's really cool and very ghoul-like. You start transforming with a huge black aura and with a bunch of red lighting. And it looks really badass, but I still like some of the other transformations better.